Ready? Action! In this video, we're going to talk about electron configuration and orbital diagram. Our objective is to determine the identity of an element from its electron configuration and to complete an orbital diagram using arrows to represent electrons. Okay, let's go. Electron configuration is the arrangement of electrons around the nucleus of an atom based on their energy level. So basically, it is the distribution of electrons among the orbitals of an atom. Okay, so again, an orbital is a region of probability where an electron can be. So again, we're going to have an analogy to make things easier. Let's say that I have a business, a hotel business. I am the major owner. So throughout the years, I've been developing my hotel. And it finally looks like this. I have a restaurant here, a garage here, and a shopping center. Now, I like my hotel colorful. So I divided my hotel and colored them. The green part is called the S Tower. Each floor in the S Tower has one room. Next, I have the P Residences, which is blue. Each floor in the P Residences has three rooms. Then I have the yellow area, which is called the D Hall. The number of floor is always negative one. So for example, in the other floors or in the other area, I have the fourth floor. Here in the D hall, it's third floor. So each floor in this residences has five rooms. Lastly, I have the F unit. Each floor in the F unit has seven rooms. Now I have my co-owners, namely Afbal, Hund, and Polly. And they have rules. They made rules, okay? So Afbal said that the lowest floor must be occupied first before higher floors are occupied. That's Afbal's rule. He patterned this with the Afbal principle. Again, the Afbal principle said that electrons fill lower energy orbitals first before higher orbitals. Afbal literally means building up. Now, the second owner, Hund, has a rule too. He said that there can only be one person in each room until all rooms in the floor are occupied. Now, the last co-owner, Polly, said that when two people are in a room, they must have or they must share different political views. So for example, the first one is a Republican, other one is a Democrat. Okay, so that is Polly's rule. He patterned this with the Pauli exclusion principle. The Pauli exclusion principle states that when an orbital has two electrons, each electron must have different spins. Now let's apply the rule. Ofbau said, first floor first. According to the Hans rule, the room must be occupied first before another can occupy it. And according to Pauli's rule, they must share a different political view. So the first one is a Democrat, the second person is a Republican. Then we go to the second floor. Then we're going to the second floor of the P residences. Okay, so just follow the principles and rules. After the third floor in the P residences, you will go back to the S tower. We are now on the fourth floor. Since the hall is closer to the fourth floor of the S tower, it will be occupied first. And again, if you remember, the flooring here is always minus one. So this will be a third floor in the D hall. Okay, so we will stop here. Suppose that one of my tenants forgot his ID. The ID in my hotel utilizes the area, the room, and the number of tenants. So this guy lost his ID. So how will I describe his ID to him? Or how will I identify it? His ID will start at 1S2 because of this, right? First floor, S tower, two persons. Then 2S2. Why? Second floor, S tower, Two person okay then 2p6 
It's the second floor of the P residences. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I hope you're getting me. When the ID ends with 2P5, is the ID of the second Republican in the P residences. So we'll continue with 3S2, third floor, S tower, two person. Then 3P6, it's this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we'll continue with 4S2, this. And now we're on the third floor of the D hall. So what will be the number? Just count the number of people following the Pauli's rule or the Pauli exclusion principle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The last number in the ID will be 3D7. So this will be the ID of this person. This, everyone, is the electron configuration. Each person here is an electron. And each electron, like humans, are unique. They have their own characteristics, values, and attributes. Period, period, period! Y'all know how we feel, but God, look at me! Look at let's make it much easier. <gasps> so let's have this. This is a periodic table, right? It looks so messy. So what I want to do, or what I will do, is to remove everything. Then, I will write the electron configuration. So it will look like this. Ta-da! Sir! <coughs> what you're going to do is to start reading here. Okay? And you read it like a paragraph. So it will be like this. 1s, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. Okay? So when you go to 6s, you need to read this one first, 4F. Then you continue to 5D, 6P, 7S. Same with 7S. Before you go to 6D, you read 5F first. Okay, so it will be 7S, 5F, 6D, 7P. So this is the easier version of the electron configuration. So I actually learned this from Tim Ball, 2018. So you may find his Twitter at Jericho Raya, I will attach the link in the description box below. So it actually looks like this. The actual periodic table with the electron configuration. So as you can see, we have 1s1, 1s2. Each electron configuration here corresponds to an element. So remember, it looks like this, right? Hydrogen in electron configuration is 1s1. Bromine here, 35, is actually... 4p5 the last electron configuration of bromine okay so let's try a problem let's say we are asked to write the electron configuration of zinc here let's use the electron configuration table zinc is here then you just have to write or copy the following again you just have to read from left to right like reading a paragraph so you start here 1s2 so why is it 1s2 not 1s1 1s2 because remember in our analogy they are in the same room we have two electrons two people then we go to 2s2 and 2p6 we're now here here then we proceed with 3s2 3p6 4s2 and 3d10 our destination very easy right y'all need to stop that okay stop so let's have a practice exercise write the complete electron configuration for the elements below pause this video and try to do it on your own ready go we are going to pretend we didn't hear that so i'm going to teach you two techniques here the first strategy is to use the atomic number. The atomic number of chlorine is 17, right? And we know that the atomic number is the number of protons. Now, in a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. What we're going to do is to just distribute this 17 to the electron configuration until we get 
17 electrons. Now, to get the maximum number of electrons per energy level, we will have the formula 2n squared. Now, if n is 3, we will have 2 raised to 3 squared, which is equal to 18. Since 17 is less than 18, we'll know that chlorine is in the third energy level. So we will write 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p, because this is the last orbital in the third energy level. All s orbitals, or all s, has a maximum of two electrons, since each orbital can be filled with two electrons. Okay, so just write 2 to all s. 2 here, 2 here. So add them, we have 4. All p has 6 since we have 3 p orbitals. 2 times 3, right? So we write 6 here. Now we have 10. Again, we have 2 and 3 s. So we will have 12. 17 minus 12 is 5. So we put the 5 here. Now, if you add them up, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 5, it's 70. Just remember the electrons in the electron configuration is equal to the atomic number. So that's the first technique. Now let's try to do this second one using this periodic table. Manganese is here. Look for manganese in the electron configuration table here. So just copy it. It will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d5. Now, there is another way to write it. This is called the shorthand electron configuration, or the shorthand form. What you have to do is to look for the noble gas before the element that you are describing. So the noble gases are here, helium, neon, argon, etc. Now the closest noble gas to manganese is argon. So you just have to write it like this, argon, AR, then bracket, then copy the remaining electron configuration. So cancel this since it stands for argon. Then you write 4s2 and 3d5. I'm glad you brought it up because I've been dying to talk about it for a f***ing hot minute. Another way to indicate the placement of electrons is an orbital diagram. Orbital diagrams are visual representation of electron configurations. So each orbital is represented by a square. So we have the s orbital, p orbital, d orbital, and f orbital. Again, the electrons are represented by arrows pointing up and down. It still follows Hunt's rule, Pauli exclusion principle, etc. So we have up here, down, up, down. Okay. In simple words, in simple words, orbital diagram shows spin of electrons and which orbital each is in. Okay. So let's again have manganese. Manganese has an electron configuration of this. So we're going to write the squares. So this square stands for 1s. This is for 2s. 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, and 3d. Now we will write the electrons. So again, up first, then down. That's 1s2. Up, down, 2s2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2p6. 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6. Then we go to 4s1, 4s2, then 3d5. 3d1, 3d2, 3d3, 3d4, 3d5. So this is the electron configuration of manganese. So it will be easier if you're going to place this under the boxes okay so now let's do the shorthand electron configuration using the orbital diagram so you write AR and 4s2 3d5 then just copy the squares 4s and 3d so up down 4s2 up 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 3d5 so that's it so check your understanding in the space below, write the unabbreviated electron configurations of the following elements. 
pause this video after 30 seconds I'll show you the answer okay so here are the answers it was all a lie guys it was all a lie she lied Kalau enggak